Hey y'all and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Jane Corley with PicVisions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. In today's episode, we are going to talk about shadows, midtones, and highlights. How to add them or take them away or just manipulate them in your Photoshop projects. I have three images here. One, two, and three that we're going to be going over. We'll start with this one of a pelican we took in Carabelle down in Florida on a fishing trip. It's a blasty blast. The first way to add shadows or highlights in your images is going to be this dodge and burn tool. It's located right here underneath the sharpness and the gradient icon above the pen tool and it looks like a little wand with a ball on top and then you have your burn tool which is it kind of looks like a little hand holding a pencil with no pencil if you will. Um, you see the hotkey is O, letter the letter O as in Oscar. Uh, we will start with the dodge tool here and the story behind the dodge and the burn tool dodging is dodging more light making higher highlights and burning is burning into your burning more light into your photograph so dodging more light will add highlights and burning more light will burn in the shadows at a lower or a higher opacity or exposure as it's referred to in the dodge and burn tool you can hit enter or return and type in the numeric number you would like and it will make the opacity of that dodge or that burn a little higher or a little lower. The burn tool is really great if you're wanting to add more shadows in the detail areas. And the dodge tool is really great for bumping up your highlights in the areas where your highlights may have been lost. But with the dodge tool, it is very easy to go overboard and blow out the pixels. So just be careful with your dodge and burn tool that you aren't going overboard and you're dodging and burning responsibly. So let's move on to our next image and how to manipulate the shadows and the highlights in this image. We're going to use an adjustment layer called Levels. Levels is right here next to brightness and contrast, right next to curves. It kind of looks like a little baby histogram. It pops up this properties panel you can of course move the properties panel if it's in the way. And in this properties window, you do have a mask option that you can manipulate the mask qualities. You have presets that will make it darker, contrast adjustments, shadows, lighter, all that kind of good stuff in here. But I tend to leave it on default, that way I can manipulate as I see fit. You also have your red, green, blue, and RGB channel here that you can make adjustments just to the reds, just to the blues, and just to the green qualities in the image. And you also have eyedroppers here where you can click here and it will identify the darkest shadows and make an overall adjustment. Midtones, eyedropper as well. And then your whites. And this will, it's pretty much like a white balance. It's a white balance in your photo that will make this the whitest white and we'll make this the blackest black. Sometimes that overall adjustment will go ahead and fix everything for you, but for the sake of this tutorial, I want to teach you what we got going on. So further down into this area here, you have a black or shadow slider, a midtone slider, and a highlight slider. As you move the highlights to the center, midtones towards the highlights or towards the shadows, and then you have your shadows adjustment here. You can also bring down your blacks, your truest black, lighten it up, your truest white, darken it down. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to do a levels adjustment, basic, quick, and easy. Preset custom, RGB, don't worry about these over here, and don't worry about this down here. These three sliders are where the magic is made. Your blacks, hit your Alt or Option key, click on the slider, and as you see, it turns it into a white canvas. This white canvas, as you move these sliders up, you can see down in the lower left hand corner those shadows are, are being brought up and now all in the image they're being brought up. Do not bring it that far up. 
bring it just until you can see a few here and there shadows, darkness, and make that adjustment. You can do that with the midtones. You're, it doesn't white out the screen to give you the key, but you can make a slight adjustment. And then holding your Alt or Option key, doing the same thing on the whites, will show you where your whites are being blown out. And I tend to not blow out my whites as much as I blow out my shadows and leave it like that. One step further, close this properties panel down, put it back where it belongs. Say I wanted to take this original image here, but I only wanted to make the levels manipulation to this area here. As we learned in a previous tutorial about masking and layers, control I will invert this mask. Then make sure you are on V for brush and you have your whites and blacks selected. Opacity 20%, that's fine and begin to paint over the elements within that masked area. White to reveal the mask and black will conceal the mask. By doing this mask area with this levels adjustment, I would suggest doing a shadows mask and a highlights mask and separating the two. That way you can make your levels adjustment for your shadows and then you can make a levels adjustment for your highlights boosting your highlights up, control I to invert the mask, make the brush a little bit smaller, and then you can brush in the highlights where you would like the highlights to go, like so. The levels adjustment is a more controlled way to do the overall image with the shadows and highlights, whereas the dodge and burn that we did in the previous image is more of a minor adjustments here and there and just bumping up selective areas while you are in your Photoshop workflow. So we will move on to the third and final image where we will do a layer fill. We will come to our layer tab up here in the file window and go to new fill layer. I'm going to do a solid color. You can name it if you want to do a preset. You can choose any of these color options here, but for a layer fill for shadows and highlights, we're going to do gray. I'll leave it on normal mode and you'll see why in just a few minutes. And then my opacity, I'm going to go ahead and set it to around 50%. Doesn't have to be exactly 50%, but around 50%. Now you can adjust the qualities of the gray. If your shadows, like in this area here, are too dark, you're going to want to choose a lighter gray. If your shadows, like I'm focusing in this area up here, are too bright, you're going to want a darker shadow, a darker version of gray. So we will leave it somewhere in the middle, hit OK. So now we have this color fill and this mask. Click on the mask, Control or Command I to invert the mask. It will bring you back to your original image. Then hit B for brush and we have our white to reveal, black to conceal, and we are going to reveal this mask area. We are on 20%, so we should see a little bit of a difference. And I'm going to paint on in these areas where my highlights and shadows are no bueno. So find these areas where they need to be bumped up a little bit and make those adjustments paint on those areas where my shadows and highlights need to be a little bit more. And you may be saying, Jane, that looks awful. Jane, that's, um, you know, what, what are you doing? What, what is the end result? The end result is, note that I left it in normal mode. I'm going to change it into overlay. That overlay will change the qualities of this color fill then I can come to 50% and bump it up and make these shadows a little bit lighter and these highlights a little bit lower, balancing out the shadows and the highlights of this image. So to reiterate, we've got dodge and burn, which is found here, your dodge tool and your burn tool. We have levels adjustments. And we have color fill overlay at 
between 50 and 100% opacity to manipulate your shadows and highlights. So I hope this video was helpful on how to add shadows and highlights and even play with your midtones a little bit. Leave in the comments below any tips or tricks you wish to share with your other fellow post-production artists, as well as anything that I may have missed or left out or anything that needs to be improved on with these Photoshop tutorials. I would love the feedback. And until next time, y'all, make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. Looking forward to seeing y'all next week, and hope you guys have a great weekend.